In the realm of Indian cinema, few films have managed to blend gritty realism with narrative innovation as effectively as Vishal Bharadwaj's 2009 masterpiece, Kamini. Even 15 years down the line, the smell of freshness from each scene, the dialogues and the impeccable music can put all the so-called masala movies that release on a regular basis on the screens to shame. It's evident that today the medium of cinema has become more of a product placement and selling exercise than a storytelling medium. The unimaginative one-dimensional characters, the formulaic themes of patriotism or feminism or chauvinism and the run-of-the-mill songs work only like a daze. People would immerse themselves in it for two and a half hours inside a theatre and forget the very moment they set their foot outside of it. There is not a sincere effort to weave a story that is engaging as well as relevant, without compromising on the entertainment value of it. And though it seems like a far-fetched dream, Vishal Bhadwaj had already done it 15 years back. Now if I start talking about this film, I can go on for hours. But I would rather try to identify four key areas which makes this film a yet-to-surpass attempt in popular Hindi cinema. The screenplay by Vishal Bharadwaj and his collaborators is a text that should be studied in film schools because of its sheer brilliant ability to spice things up with each scene and hit the right chords with the dialogues. The twin trope in Hindi cinema has been done to death with both good and bad films sprinkled around. But to make the duality of two identical twins a theme point hasn't been done so well. Charlie and Guttu are like opposite sides of the same coin. They have their core made from the same material but having different manifestations. One stammers, the other lists. One tries to make an honest living. The other aspires to be a big gangster. However, both of them have some common qualities too. Love for their partners and the resilience to go to any extent for them. While Guddu's love affair with Sweetie is pretty apparent, the undertones of homoeroticism between Charlie and Mikhail give us a hint of their relationship too. The motive of duality is not only limited to these two protagonists alone. Even the villains, Gope and Tashi, also mirror each other. One is a local muscle man turned politician who mobilizes the Marathi sentiment to retain power, while the other is an international gang lord who mobilizes people from different ethnic backgrounds and countries to hold on to power. Both of them don't hesitate to use their families as means to garner more and more power. This theme of duality manifests even further with the characters of the policeman brothers Lobo and Lele and the gangster brothers Shumon and Hemoji. Through this theme, Ardwaj keeps reminding us the major theme of the film. The paths of good and evil lie very close to each other and it's a matter of choice which one has to take. Speaking of dialogues, this movie shall hold its place up there with the best films to come out of Hindi cinema in terms of dialogue writing. The cleverness with which Bharadwaj and his team load each dialogue sequence with their views on politics, social practices and contemporary issues is a marvel in itself. The dialogues like Ope, Ope Apne Paas Bhi Hai instills the raw humor of wordplay that is so characteristic of the Indian conversational way. And to follow it up with Kamuka War Tuner, I am not America, just shows what a brilliant conjurer Bhadwaj is. How he can transform a simple rustic local conversation into one about global politics so effortlessly is a delight to watch. His love for the popular culture also comes into play whenever there is a scope. When Guddu struggles with his stammer to count the number of failures on his hand in the police custody, Inspector Lobo breaks into the Das Bahane song. But I cannot complete talking about this movie without mentioning the amazing build-up sequence where Bhope shoots Mikhail. 
The sheer tension that is built with seemingly irrelevant conversations between the two characters about horses, lemons and chilies, loaded with sexual innuendos, yet a more than satisfactory climax at the end of the scene. Cinematography and editing for this film stand very tall as a landmark of Hindi cinema, even to this day. Tasadak Hussain's camera runs through the streets, alleys, slums, and over the railway tracks with no abandon at all, resembling the life of these characters in the film. The essence of a city which is reputed for being relentless and restless is captured masterfully with this handheld camera movement. The bleak color palette complements the movement by breaking the romanticism attached to the Mumbai rains and bringing out the mud, the filth, and the struggles that the underprivileged sections of the city have to face during the monsoons. The editing is reminiscent of the breathlessness seen in films like Run Lola Run, Fight Club, or Snatch, creating a true crime caper experience which is so rare in Indian cinema. Each scene is designed like a musical piece which is just about to reach its crescendo before the next scene starts. And the final weapon in Bhagwaj's artillery is his music. The background score is something to preserve. On the one hand, it sets the pace of the tsunami of events that follow in the film, and on the other hand, it churns a kind of slow burn rage which reaches its crescendo in the climax. The songs range from the romantic Thode Bhige to the eclectic Tantanan, but without losing Bharadwaja's sly cheeky sense of humor sprinkled around each of them. The one song on AIDS awareness might seem a bit out of place going by the plot of the film, but it nonetheless sets the tone and the mood for the mayhem to follow. The nostalgia for the 70s Hindi crime drama films is evident in the score which is highlighted through the homages Vishal pays to Arti Burman in several of the sequences. Kamine paved the way for Vishal Bhadwaj to be recognized as a filmmaker unafraid to push boundaries. When the world was anticipating his third installment of his Shakespeare trilogy, and he was being perceived as one of the more serious filmmakers working in Bollywood, he chose a genre completely against all expectations. Kamine stands as a testament to the power of storytelling in Indian cinema through visual, sound and editing. The actors were all impeccable with special shoutouts to the performances by Amol Gupte and Chandan Roy Sanya. Indian cinema has definitely never seen that Queen Brothers trope to be used so effectively before or even after that. Through its international visual treatment and the narrative innovation, the film not only captivated audiences upon its release, but also continues to inspire and awe filmmakers even today. As we look back on its legacy, it becomes evident that Kamine was not just ahead of its time. It set a new standard for what cinema could achieve in India, both artistically and entertainment-wise.